Hi, my name is Dr. Gulam Bahadur. I'm the consultant clinical andrologist here. I'll be talking to you about advanced sperm preparation. The question is, why would we want to learn about advanced sperm preparation methods? It's purely because we probably want to improve our IUI success rates and, of course, IVF. And we want to avoid harm to the woman by trying to remove all the uh, prostaglandins in the seminal fluid and also all the cells that should not be there. And uh, obviously we need to use that to optimize our sperm preparation protocols and uh, th the key thing is to be able that we are able to retain motile sperm and preferably we are achieving at least greater than 5 million motile progressive sperm. So what are the general problems that we face is that the first thing that you see is that there's a lack of standardization here. And uh, if we begin in the laboratory, the first thing that you do is use a centrifuge. And several people may have difficulty in even trying to understand the differences between revolutions per minute and the g-force but I think most people actually have no problem with that. The question of whether you're going to use a gradient or a swim-up method is one of choice and uh, there's nothing evidence-based in, in that choice. Uh, what buffers you use and then uh, the, the key area to, to address is well, how will sperm survival be after the preparation uh, and um, what I tend to do is I individualize and tailor make the sperm preparation uh, because there, there are also issues about timing and, uh, and the timing relate to how much time must be spent before the sperm preparation for the sperm to be held and how long can you keep it in the incubator prior to insemination and at what temperature are you going to keep it. So there are general issues that we want to uh, avoid uh, and what we want to avoid is thing, is thing like when we have got a normal sperm sample we end up with something like virtually all the sperms are lost and we now have a scenario of uh, having converted that patient into an oligosperma type patient. Uh, the questions about ejaculatory abstinence and I have been uh, individualizing abstinence times too. But when you look at the actual problems that a laboratory faces, you see that there's a huge variation in the sperm sample itself. Like you'll have a very viscous sample, you'll have something called a bitty sample, meaning it's full of gelatinous bits in it, and all these things will hinder the quality of your sperm preparation. You may have a very dense sample, and then you may have a sample uh, which is uh, uh, very high, uh, which, which has a very high volume. Uh, and so the question is how do you manage these different samples? Uh, and um, if there are sensitive samples that begin to die very quickly after sperm preparation, what do you do? Um, and what do you do with slow liquefaction samples? And um, these are some of the problems that a laboratory person working at the, on these samples need to recognize and be able to or vary the protocol. And the trouble with uh, today's protocol is that there's only one SOP, standard operating procedure, that applies to all the, all the patient samples. And this cannot be right. So you do need to be able to vary your protocols to optimize your sperm yield. Now going on to advanced sperm preparation, why would you want to do such an advanced sperm preparation technique? The idea is that you will take out all any damaged sperm uh, out of the system uh, and um, uh, by reducing the damaged sperm you, you will hopefully have sperm with better DNA to ensure that the uh, fertilization will lead to a full 
uh, live birth, a uh, healthy live birth for that matter. And there are four basic approaches to this, and that is to use a surface charge uh, separation technique. You can use apoptotic approaches which use magnetic beads. You can use a membrane maturity, maturity system um, and also the ultramorphology uh, system. But neither, none of those four systems that I described here are really useful uh, for IUI purpose, but may be useful for IVF. But the question is, I put to you, that I have spoken to you about consecutive ejaculate in the past. I think the best answer to all this, to get a very improved sperm preparation, is to to lean, to try and get that second ejaculate within half an hour of the first. That second ejaculate will have much better linear progression and it will have much lesser DNA fragmentation than the first ejaculate. I hope that you will take this advice on board and improve your success rates and improve your recovery rates importantly and try and aim for 5 million living motile progressive sperm for your, at least for your IUI inseminations. Thank you.